Astoria was once described as the most wicked place on earth for its population. It was teeming with all kinds of people and nationalities from the Finns to the Chinese to the Italians, Hawaiians, Poles, Swedes, Portuguese, you name it, it was there. The town was deluged with lumberjacks, transient fishermen, local fishermen, businessmen, farmers, shippers, river and bar captains, and all manner of cannery workers. To entertain them were community centers, churches, theaters, gambling halls, opium dens, brothels, and taverns. By 1900, it had already had three generations of hardy fishing families that made a living on the mighty Columbia River. Astoria's boom time was from 1860 to the 1920s, and it saw the first organized township, first post office, and first federal taxman west of the Rockies. This slow decline from the 1920s lasted into the 1980s when the town began to slowly come alive again. There were many reasons why Astoria settled into being a small and somewhat poor fishing town. Principally, its malicious and deadly bar, which made shipping by water extremely dangerous. The bar came to be known as the Graveyard of the Pacific because of its wild and unpredictable weather and tides which beat up ships and sank them. It was far easier to wait for an opening and steam into Portland, who had much better harbors and ports linked to the railroads that brought in the massive wheat shipments from the Midwest and then shipped back out again. Then came the fishing out of the salmon, especially the prize Chinook, due to human arrogance and dismissal of any kind of conservation. In 1883, 55 canneries dotted both sides of the Columbia River and packed a whopping 630,000 cases of Chinook salmon, which was about two-thirds of the national sales. By 1903, only seven canneries remained and began to pack other kinds of fish, such as sardines and tuna, but even they became scarce. Then the worst depression that America has ever seen by 1929, plus the severe decline in the lumber industry, once again because of human mismanagement, and Astoria, Oregon went into an economic decline that lasted until the 1980s. Because of strict federal laws, the salmon then began to make a comeback. However, the massive dam projects, which changed the course of the Columbia River, once again threatened the salmon, and they have become even more endangered than they were when being fished out. Needless to say, there is a healthy animosity between the fishermen and their families and the federal fish and game deputies, as the government is making rules without the input of the men who knew the river and the fish better than anyone. Today, there remains a culture of fishing families. The catch has expanded to include crab, sardine and sturgeon, as well as all kinds of salmon. These fishing families are a tough breed and they proudly trace their lives in Astoria back to the mid-19th century. These families have a tradition of over 150 years of making a living off the Columbia River. They are fifth and sixth generation. They have persevered through thick and thin and will continue their legacy for generations to come. It's a hard and simple life that few who sit in a posh restaurant ordering their freshly grilled salmon with Pinot Grigio know about. I think they would enjoy the yarn. It's a way of life that knows the seasons, the weather, and the tides of the abundant and giving river that supported them and theirs for a very long time. And it is most certainly not over yet. <laughs>